expect others' emotion, expect others' um, viewpoints. Um, I feel that, and this is my personal opinion, I feel that if we could instill that into our children, that is one of the most valuable things. So I thought it was interesting that Plato um, said that quote because it's such an empowering statement. Because if you think about it, it's such a humble thing to do to um, respect someone's viewpoint who it could be drastically different from ours, but it doesn't mean that we have to take a stance that's so strong that we're abrasive with it. it instead of being abrasive, we can be embracive uh, of the person and be more curious about well, why is it that this person thinks this way? Or why is it that we we feel we, this person is so passionate about this particular issue? And that's what education is all about. That's why we're here. That's why we do this here at New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education, is because we want it to be an expansive thing that you and your children and your teachers and the custodians and everyone who is involved in your child's education. And even, you know, um, as far as um, the person who drives the bus or, or maybe the person who's carpooling your child to school, everyone plays an integral part in making your child or making our children successful for the future. But if we could just teach them to respect each other. And so that was one of the things, the reason why I chose that quote, the reason why I chose it was because I that was one of the things that I distinctly remember about PTO and PTA meetings. It was a different interaction from uh, my parent or your parent or parents or guardian. And I do understand that not everyone comes from a very nurturing household and we also have to take into account is that we as parents, we are not perfect. Um, parents out there, if you're listening, there is no such thing as a perfect parent. All you have to do is show up and be real about being uh, sincere about your child's education. And we know that not everyone is in the greatest position. Um, and we recognize that. And we also recognize that that also presents an opportunity for them to grow uh, in a different way and become stronger in a different way because circumstances do change and you can be the face of something different. And so that's what I remember about going to PTO meetings. I saw my parents in a kind of a different way. I saw my teachers and my principals and other children's parents in a different light uh, because they interacted differently and it showed that they all had a mutual respect for each other. Even if there was, it could be something as simple as, okay, well, we're organizing or scheduling or managing um, a back-to-school barbecue or, or a pumpkin carving contest or a teacher's appreciation week or a, a way to um, acknowledge our teachers or our lunchroom, lunchroom workers um, or our bus drivers. Uh, I can remember... Maybe them organizing <laughs> at, at a particular time of year and maybe giving the lunchroom lady, and I know you probably can't do this now, but the bus drivers maybe cookies that they had baked or just showing a small gesture um, of appreciation or respect, but just seeing them work together through that. Maybe a particular person's idea didn't come through at that particular meeting, but they respected the fact that others wanted to do something different and that there, there may have been a time for that particular project to move forward and maybe the next time that their project could be accomplished. And so children watching parents and educators in that role, and, and we take for granted that, you know, we who are in the workforce probably see this all day, every day, and we probably do it um, without thinking, um, without even acknowledging, but in this time that we're in now, um, the universe is giving us an opportunity to stop and look and reflect and be very cognizant. We're no longer robotic. We're no longer um, going about our days as we have been in the past. We have to actually methodically uh, think about 
what we're going to do next. What are we going to do with our children? What are we going to feed them? What are we going to, how are we going to get them from point A to point B? And actually stopping for a moment just to appreciate the fact that we have this opportunity, even in this difficult time, to be one-on-one with the people that we care about most. Maybe we can't physically be there because we have to, maybe they're sick and you have to be away from them. So you have to figure out a different way to communicate how you love them or how you feel for them or how much they mean to you. And so you're being forced to um, actually come up with a way without being robotic about it and showing people that you care. And that's the kind of feeling that I felt with the PTO and the PTA and just seeing the, all of those um, all of those people just kind of work together and mesh together um, for the enrichment of the school. And so they could just be selling tickets for the for the upcoming carnival. But, you know, just about the way that they went about it and respected each other and showing reverence for each other. And so, you know, just having common speakers to come in, whether it's psychologists to talk about, you know, how to handle pressures and stressors of today's, you know, society, which I'm pretty sure would be um, very helpful after we go through this COVID-19 event um, for parents and teachers alike, um, administrators, preparing our kids to thrive in this changing world, um, you know, having someone to come in and talk about that or talk about climate issues or talk about special events. And all of these things are free. So, you know, these PTA workers and these parent volunteers, they do all these things that, you know, selfless acts, you know, back to school parties, um, you know, um, working to get grants for teachers so that they can get extra supplies or just having these parent education programs to bring them more knowledge or having a new family ice cream social because we know how difficult it is to move to a new area but for someone because we know our educators they have a role and they have a job to do so if we as parents have the time and we can participate in these parent education events or PTO meetings and give back a little bit welcome back um, coffee for parent I mean for teachers you know after the break or um, having a, a buddy program for for families or luncheons for teachers and staff just to show them our appreciation, or even the security guards at our school, Uh, again, our lunchroom workers and our custodians and everybody that, you know, makes it a special place to be um, for our children. And so it could be as simple as that. And so if you're looking for ways to get involved in your child's education, uh, I do think that parent education events, PTOs and PTAs um, can be re-energized by having these speaker series and and also having all those traditional things that we've had in the past. Like I said, you know, whether it's a pumpkin festival or back to school barbecue or a book fair or just helping out with a teacher luncheon to show them our appreciation. Those volunteer opportunities are there for parents in almost every school. And I know that they greatly appreciate parents who sacrifice their time to, you know, put together these workshops or seminars or trainings as additional resources for these parent education um, series um, for the community and trying to um, work with parents um, on some of the most challenging issues that are confronting them today Um, in their private lives and their public lives and helping show that, you know, the things that we do, even the teacher's aid, you know, we have so many diversities within our schools. Some schools are dealing with um, larger immigrant populations than some. Some are dealing with uh, maybe um, having partnerships or model partnerships. Um, showing that or tutoring for children with special needs or special have special skills or who are gifted in a different way and uh, working with our kindergarten programs 
How do you handle homework? Because I know I probably am not smarter than a fifth grader in trying to figure out this new math that they do now. So, you know, having small things like, you know, how to, how to handle the homework when the kids come home, having just a workshop on that. So parents kind of feel a little more at ease about, um, you know, what their children are going through. And then even tackling some of those, you know, difficult topics like self-esteem and stereotypes and, you know, life choices. Maybe they could have experts to come in and actually um, seek out other organizations to help strengthen their families. And so I think that even though initially when I picked this topic, I thought, Maybe my listeners, you know, won't be as energized as I am about this PTO meeting (laughs) or PTA meeting or parent education events. But I do think it's an opportunity for us as today's parents to um, look at some of the things that are most requested from our other parents who may be struggling with parent communication or helping their children to learn and make the right choices or make the right decisions. And, you know, these are the priceless skills that we can teach our children um, to, and we can put it into practice by showing them the power of parental involvement and the power of parental influence. And I by no means got it all right. Um, I had great parents as an example, great grandparents as an example, but None of us get it all right. And we all think, oh, well, uh, well, maybe my parents did it this way. I don't, I didn't like that. So I might change it up a little bit and do it that way. There's always, you know, something that's there. But, you know, with everything, there are um, parents out there who are looking for a different way or a different style of doing things. Yes, you know, it's not about, you know, punishment and rewards all the time. Sometimes it's just about doing the next right thing for your child so that your child can uh, hopefully be as stress-free as possible and know that they have a support system and know that they can have someone to not always just come to them and tell them where they're doing great, but also tell them where they're doing wrong and providing um, loving correction and effective communication. And so... um, these PTA meetings or PTO can bring in, and these parent education events can bring in things to kind of help the family grow within the education system and also outside because we as parents can nurture each other. And we can nurture our teachers and, uh, you know, it nurtures the parent-teacher relationship and it shows the importance of that and it gives the right attitude. And again, Remember, um, our quote for today was, let parents bequeath to their children, not riches, but the spirit of reverence from Plato. And so I hope that um, tonight's segment or tonight's episode has provided you with some of um, life's most important things, that, which are our children who will be bringing us um, the future. And... Um, We need to, in this time, focus on what really matters so that we can ensure that our children have an honest, uh, respectful place to come. And we know that not everyone is in the best situations, but we who are around those children, if we can show them a glimmer of reverence and hope uh, when we do encounter them, Sometimes all it takes is just that one spark to change the life of a student. So I want to um, thank you for joining me tonight. And I hope that um, tonight's segment um, was um, enriching for you. And on next week, we will be discussing education conferences and professional development for our teachers. So again, thank you. I'm your host, Buffy Williams.
We hope that you join us next week.